the ethnic studies leadership class in my eighth grade year at Rosa Parks Middle School. I find this class very important to all students because it gives them a different way of thinking as in how their ancestors came about and why is it important for people to know their history. The class helped to build my self-esteem due to having some sense of my ancestors and where I come from. It makes students aware of their actions and how their actions affect their people and all communities. By taking this class, it will not only do the minorities a favor, but the education system as well. Research shows that it can help close the achievement gaps, reduce dropout rates, and increase graduation rates. <laughs> Take, taking this class impacted me a substantial, a, a substantial amount because it made me look at how my ancestors' culture was in the past and how important it is for me to do better educationally. We need to help the youth within the community transition to a better mentality so they do not continue to oppress themselves. Thank you again for giving me an opportunity to speak about why ethnic studies should be recommended to be implemented as a high school graduation requirement. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ortiz, what school do you go? Any questions? Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. What school do you attend? Huh? What school do you attend? Uh, I was in Rosa Parks Middle School. Thank you. Nice. Good, Good job. Your name again? Xavier Ortiz. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nicely done. Do I begin or? Good evening, school board members. I'm grateful for your time today. I will be speaking about the effects ethnic studies has had on me, starting with me. I'm Eviana Costa, a product of ethnic studies leadership class from eighth grade at Rosa Parks, and I'm currently in eight, 11th grade at Luther Burbank. Before taking ethnic studies, I began to question my motives in life, my position in life, and my perspective on life. I felt as if I found where I came from, and now I see my world, my reality in a different way, and question my actions. I was affected greatly by the knowledge gained in ethnic studies class, which made me more aware and conscious of many racial conflicts and stereotypes that surround and exist within our community and some minds. Ethnic studies is important because it gives us a historical roots, historical roots to grow from and recognize the achievements of other ethnicities. Each young student needs these roots to understand their people's origin. All of our people contributed and all, of the pe all people need to recognize all of our achievements. To, know, to grow, knowing the culture which many of us have lost, including Caucasians, which came from Europe, and many young African Americans that came from Africa. Thus, many students benefit from ethnic studies because many students don't have a perspective on how it is to have a cultural identity. They are clueless about the struggle and the sacrifice of many ethnicities. Not having a cultural identity makes it hard to respect yourself and separate you from your community. This could lead to bloodshed in between all races and internalized oppression. Rather than this, we can show resilience in the community and work together to improve relations and conditions so we can all succeed. This is why I think you should consider making ethnic studies a high school graduation requirement. And in the next upcoming weeks, there will be more of us coming. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Impostum. Thank you. All right, welcome. Hello. Hello. I don't think I could top those um, yeah, words, but I'll try. Um, good evening, Board of Education. My name is Yoon Turn, and I'm a Myanmar American student at Sacramento State. I am here to support the Student Advisory Council for Ethnic Studies to be implemented into the Sac City Unified School District. Coming from Sacramento Charter High School, whose population wasn't quite diverse, I didn't get to identify much with my ethnic background. Along with this, the history classes being taught were highly revolved around Caucasians. So not only was I deprived of my ethnic community, but I was also deprived of my history. I'm a Myanmar American, and most people don't even know who that is. I wanted to explain to these people who I was, but I couldn't because I didn't know where to start, because I didn't know where my roots began. It wasn't until my freshman year at Sacramento State that I learned about my culture, my history, and other ethnic groups. I didn't even know what ethnic study was, and I find that as a huge problem. If I had been introduced to ethnic studies during my high school years, I would have been more aware of other ethnic groups, and I would have been able to be confident to tell others of who I was and what I identified with. Not only does ethnic studies touch on histories of minorities, but it also gives people a sense of, sense of who they are, just like me. This is why I am here tonight to support the Student Advisory Council. I favor 
the ethnic studies for high school students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. <laughs> All right, good evening, Superintendent Banda, President Wu, and the Board of Education trustees. I would first like to thank you all for having me. My name is Maria Angela Sarte. I am a second year first generation college student at Sacramento State, and I proudly identify myself as a Filipina American. And the reason I'm here is because I want to explain why I am in full support for the upcoming Student Advisory Council's Youth Movement of Ethnic Studies to be a requirement course for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Although I myself graduated from private school prior to coming to Sacramento State, I have had experience from friends that I've met who graduated from high schools of the school district. And they explained to me how as a minority they felt shame and identifying themselves ethnically due to being judged and stereotyped. I was able to relate to them because I too experienced that graduating from a private school where I didn't want to share any part of my culture and express it due to feeling afraid of not making any friends or simply feeling accepted. I, like many of my friends who've graduated from an SCUSD high school, remained silent because that's how I thought as an Asian American I was supposed to act. Um, however, once I went to college, I took an ethnic studies course in which I learned a lot of my own ethnic heritage as well as other ethnic groups and I felt a sense of relief. I felt that I suddenly belonged and I was more appreciative of where I'm from as I learned of the struggles that my own ethnic group has gone through just to get to where we are today as well as understand other ethnic groups as well. I finally felt my own sense of peace and I was no longer afraid to express myself. That's why from my perspective as a college student, I believe that if we were to have ethnic studies as a requirement for high schools, students will be educated earlier on the importance of understanding their own ethnic backgrounds, especially because Sacramento is also very diverse. Um, they will also show more compassion and this may lower the stereotypes um, and we may also appreciate the diversity around us. So I hope this gets passed and thank you for your time. Thank you. Our, our, final, our final three comments for 7.0 are from Ramon Diaz, Anna Molander, and Grace Trujillo. First, I wanted to say to the youth who came out and so eloquently spoke on behalf of ethnic studies, thank you for having the courage to come out and speak tonight and share the importance of ethnic studies in your lives. What I will tell you is I know from research that I have read that when students have access to ethnic studies, you see increased retention, you see increased student achievement, you see reduced, you see reduced dropout rates. I'm very proud to say that I'm on the board of the Chicano Latino Youth Leadership Project, and we have four pillars. The first pillar is culture. The second pillar is community, the third is college, and then career. And we recognize that without teaching the youth who participate in our programs to understand their culture and connect to that identity, the strength that will come from that won't allow the development and growth academically to then seek college and see themselves as meaningly, meaningfully contributing to communities in the world. And so that's absolutely critical. One last thing I'd like to say, a few years ago, I was doing a community organizing in Fresno, and there was an epidemic of teen suicides in the Hmong community. As a result of that, uh, there was curriculum that was instituted to teach young people in the K-12 system Hmong history. And what we saw was an immediate decline in suicides and a sense of pride in identity that was really rich and I think an exemplar for what can be, doing, what can be done across the state. Um, I'd also like to comment on Ms. Molander's statements around the calendar. I just went through the process of open enrollment with my daughter for the first time. And I was actually there as the open enrollment center was um, dealing with the change to the school calendar. I spoke to a couple staff who shared that, in their estimate, thousands of parents had been given incorrect information already. I knew what that meant immediately in terms of trying to correct that information for those families who already had one set calendar date in their mind. So I appreciate what Ms. Molander is sharing. I trust that the district is going to take multiple measures to make sure that parents are notified but I also know that that's inadequate when misinformation has been shared and when we can correct that moving forward. Thank you, Member Ryan. Student Member Seidel. Good evening. I would just like to take